let's chat a little bit about holographic skill acquisition and also we want to chat about learning in relation to goal setting and different uh, swaths of time or different relationships to what a goal can be which through altering how we perceive uh, a clarity of intent can really have a, a profound change on the path and how we're exploring things. So, first we have to look at the goal setting, or maybe we look at the skill acquisition. Let's say we want to learn a skill. Uh, a short, small time frame goal would be, I want this skill. Now, at the end of that time, hopefully you have that skill. Short goal, you develop a skill. Now, for some people, this is very easy and they like to do these little chunks of things in isolation. Then there are others who go, well, I don't know, things are pretty good. I don't really have a specific thing that I want and I kind of just like to float through and go with the flow. And that in and of itself is a different type of goal, right? A different type of intention. And so with that type of intention that is uh, of uh, releasing into the flow or into this relationship with you know, forces bigger than ourselves, into synchronicity, etc., that can become the goal, is simply existing from as deep in that place as possible. Now from that place, you get a holographic type of skill acquisition. And what I mean by that is that you dive into this, you dive into this, you dive into that and this and that and this, and you might not master this immediately, and you might not master this immediately, but you're touching on all these things, and every different thing that you touch on is in relation to this overarching goal, let's say, of surrendering to that path. Uh, or to that light, or to that intention of, say, synchronicity and flow and finding that way. Uh, some would call it going back to zero as well. Now, when that's our approach, because it's so grand, far more grand than our mind can comprehend, we touch on all these skills, and every skill that we touch on feeds every other skill. Uh, and through this uh, kind of group <laughs> feeding mechanism, the cyclical or more uh, accurately like spir spiracical, uh, a spiral type pattern, uh, everything gets to grow together. And everything is growing in a way that is supporting our ability to stay on that path and within that synchronicity and that flow. So. Uh, something to think about when we're, we're talking about goal setting, often this is confined. And if you have a personality similar to my own, uh, it's, it feels very constrained and it's not, um, it feels like it's detracting from being in the right place at the right time, learning what you need to be learning in that moment and giving ourselves up to that flow and to that synchronicity. So if we can expand our view of what it means to have a goal and it, if it can expand to the point where it's overarching, uh, overarching the whole scope of the life, then it's beyond the, the comprehension of the deciding mind, so to speak. And within that vast, vast, vast space, all these other things now are freed to start swirling you know up to the surface in terms of information we encounter um, what type of experiences we're having in meditation uh, not in terms of deifying the phenomena of a flash of light here there whatever um, but in terms of the depth of the surrender into what we're working with and how that continues to pervade through our lives beyond the meditation. Okay, and in this sense, the meditation 
and how everything else works in life start to become one. The practice and the life start to merge together because it is beyond the practice of that particular skill. It is the practice, let's say, of being in as great a union with, uh, we'll use light for right now, um, in as great a union with light, flow, and synchronicity as possible. So, I uh, hope you found this entertaining, helpful. Thanks for your time. If you're interested in training, you can check out the website and find me there. All right, bye.